All right, folks. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna share how uh, spirit uh, uh, performs miracles. Because uh, I'm here with my mighty companion, Greg. And within the first three minutes, we came up with a topic for this Zoom call. This is uh, Kenneth Price, and this is a ministry I'm hosting, PsychiatricSobriety.com. And this is Sunday, January 8th, and this is 9 a.m. Pacific time. This is noon Eastern time, and this is our 59th Sunday morning Zoom call. And this ministry started a year ago because somebody had to start it because I was... um, well, I'll just give you my story. I, I'm 55 years old, and I have what I have uh, labeled a psychiatric uh, parable. I spent 25 years of my life in psychiatry trying to fix my chem- my brain chemistry with pharmaceuticals to heal. It didn't work. Um, it's, it's a common um, dynamic that's happening in our country, in our world, where people are trying to heal uh, with the help of pharmaceuticals. I am touching on a very sacred cow here, folks, because I'm not here to judge uh, the pharmaceuticals. In fact, um, if, if we judge the pharmaceuticals, we're going to stay in the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical spider web forever. We're not here to judge it. We're here to emerge from it. Uh, it takes a miracle to, to emerge from what happened in my story. 25 years of, of, of psychotropics, you know, anti-anxiety. Um, I just, I, I can't even go down the list. I was, the doctor was giving me, you know, prescription after prescription after prescription, to fix this, to fix this, to fix this. And, 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 and I couldn't heal. It, it became impossible to heal because the pills themselves eventually began to drag me down. Um, make a long story short, I had to get off everything. And by the grace of God, I made it through those withdrawals. And who could not start a ministry after having, you know, been graced with a miracle like that? The miracle took a lot of work. So that's what the Zoom call is. The Zoom call is about the work that we do together. Because um, I can't, I can't not, I mean, I, I can't stay immersed unless I share it. I'm, that's why I call this psychiatric sobriety, because I'm a 12 stepper from way back. Mm-hmm. The only way you stay sober one day at a time is by sharing it, extending it. So I don't want to complicate this. Um, the reason I call it a ministry is, you know, I've already gone over that. I've, I've used the word grace over and over and over. Uh, but I got to be very clear, and I do this in all my, my, you know, introductions, that I'm not talking about a religion, you know. Actually, religions, you know, the, 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 the religions, and, and this is what's going to be topic of the Zoom call, the religions caused the wounding, which is the reason I was put on those pills in the first place. <laughs> so, um, all right, I, I don't want to, you know, go on a tirade before, you know, getting this started. Um, the healer's prayer is how I like to start this, because I'm a Course in Miracles student. And the healer's prayer goes like this. We are here only to be truly helpful. And we're here to represent him or her who sent us. We do not have to worry about what to say or what to do. Because he or she who sent us will direct us. We are content to be wherever he or she wishes. Knowing he or she goes there with us. And we will be healed as we let him or her teach us how to heal. Um, as always happens, you know, let's see, we got on board. We got Greg, we got Jenny, and we got uh, uh, myself. Um, as, as always happens, you know, about two minutes before this, the, I started the recording, Greg showed up, and the topic was just a no-brainer. Um, Greg's in a small town, and, you know, I, I, I'll let him kind of share the story, but I, I think I, I, I got the gist. He's feeling constricted um, because I asked him, he was nicely dressed. And I said, Oh, did you get back from church today? And, and I, I'm the hypothesis is that there's a struggle with some of the, the dogmatic fundamentalist religious, you know, doctrine that, that could be, that might be, be being spread on a Sunday. Um, it's, it was, it was that doctrine, you know, the blood of the lamb, you know, uh, <laughs> that I couldn't digest as a, as a gay man in the in the 1980s and i had to figure it out for myself i i i said this this guy jesus has some really badass teachings i can follow what this man jesus says but his followers excuse the term his followers aren't making any sense they're telling me to to you know to to drink some kool-aid here 
this blood of Jesus and this, uh, you know, gays are going to hell because it, 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 the theology was was not matching the original teachings. I had to go on a vision quest and I, I, I got slammed. And the the pills probably saved me from committing suicide. I had to get off the pills, but, you know, I get to start this ministry. By the way, um, I'm firmly convinced that Jesus has a role in this ministry, um, mm-hmm. but not some blood of lamb Jesus. So I, I, I've, I've said too much. Greg, Greg what, was, what was it that was coming up, coming up this, this morning for you so we can, you know, get this started and I can stop talking? Oh, <laughs> well, that, that's, that, that's one of my issues right now. I mean... Um, can can I go? Can I can I get a little um, free about this? Um, I would yeah. I would pray that you would get free. I want everyone to freedom of okay, expression. Okay. Well, I, I'll tell you what I did since I was gone. I've been taking more Bach remedies. I had to take um, two different, one, three different ones, and they kind of brought me back to life. And I can do this kind of stuff now. Um, I was just burned out, you know, after a. A, a decade-long struggle of pills and family and all this kind of stuff. And then I found out about everything when I got off the pill. I was clear enough to think. So it all hit me at once. You know, all this stuff. So I started taking one called Star of Bethlehem. That's one Bach remedy. And it's for people with unconsolable grief. I kind of think of like, you know, that uh, that point of, you know, in Westerns where the woman is like, she's hysterical and everything, and the man has to hit her and everything to bring her back. Well, that was me. So Star of Bethlehem worked in that way. And then I took another one, Olive, which was, was for psychic and spiritual and psychological um just fatigue so i took those two and i took one called gentian so you know i i wasn't suicidal never been suicidal i was just spent i was completely spent so i had to i started taking those i was kind of in that live or die kind of mode don't care if i live or die mode so these really these three really kind of brought me back i'm doing the game again and i'm a little bit more focused i don't feel those raw feelings as much of that despair that that intense despair and everything and now i'm like a little bit more focused i can function a little bit more um (laughs) so i did that yeah and i did i'll go into a little bit later but i did a little some regular homeopathy and that's really helped me a lot to for some of the more physical symptoms but they all have an emotional kind of parallel to it so the the regular homeopathy is fluoride for the teeth i had to get teeth because the withdrawals took my teeth um it was very raw but um fluoride has overlap of kind of like it's since i always had a you know support parents emotional I, i couldn't stand up on my own so fluoride associated is associated with the bones and fluoride like helps you to have strength to stand on your own. It with that too. So homeopathy has saved my life. But um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've just kind of been out of it, trying to regain my strength and trying to figure out how to do these uh, these support groups again, really, because I kind of I was on zero, and yeah, I had to come back. So that's what I've been doing. Hey, Chris. Good to meet, see you again. You know, yeah, good just want to let everybody know why I was gone. You know, and yeah, I, I'm I'm dealing with uh, moving out of the uh, family's house, my father's house now, which was where all the abuse took place. But you know, with the star of Bethlehem, I'm I'm I don't feel so abused anymore. It's like something that's in the past. And, um, you know, some people said I was like, kind of like, you know, kind of being, uh, what was it? The people, people thought, I had the opinions a lot that I was being sort of um, in a pity party. But the 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 Bach remedy for that is Willow. It wasn't quite a pity party. I was just kind of spent. And I had to like release that trauma. 
and the Star of Bethlehem helped do that, and the brought me back to life. But yeah, I'm 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 facing a move now, um, kind of uncertainty. You know, um, don't know what I want to do. I've been on the edge of society mentally and emotionally for so long. It's going to be like, I mean, I'm I want to do something from home, remote work, but. I don't have the confidence or the discipline yet. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm kind of in the dark. I'm, I'm trying to figure out like how I'm going to go back. Go, you know, it, this whole process has been like a slow re-entrance to society for me. I felt very disconnected and very like just raw and then too, too raw to be part of like a lot of the time support groups. So a lot of this I just did on my own. It was just like a dark night of the soul. I couldn't even bring it into like Al-Anon and stuff. But it, it's like I'm now I'm trying to figure out how to do the nine to five, even if it's just from home. So it's, you know, I think I, I've told you I've felt more identified with people who were vagabonds and on the edge. So it's. It's, it's 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 a transition that I'm going through now. I'm kind of getting my oomph back, but I don't know quite where to go. I I, I don't feel like I, said, I, don't, I don't feel good in the hometown atmosphere, the small town stuff, and I'm I'm just kind of uncomfortable right now. But Greg, if know. I if I might add, I'll share what my integration looked like, and then we can go on to Chris. But I okay, I, okay. I had, you know, integrating back into the world of 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 the connected. Uh -huh. <laughs> what else do I want to call it? If there is such a <laughs> yeah. it, um, it, it was a huge blow to my ego. Um, right. But people think ego, and they they think you know if you're if you're just better than everyone else, you have a huge ego. Uh -huh. oh, no, actually, in order to have a mental ill, my mental illness became my ego. Yeah. My men my ego was my mental illness. I have this mental illness. I have this mental illness. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a mental illness. It was ego. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not. I don't want to go too deep into that, you know. But that's mm -hmm. kind of food to chew on because what was being dismantled, you know, as I as I re-enter, because it's hard to re-enter. That's why I started the support group. So we're all re-entering at various stages. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, I, I felt like I was getting slammed. It was just opposite of what I perceived. It wasn't Kenneth getting slammed because he was so far behind. It was his ego being dismantled to let the love out. That's that's all I want to say on that before going on to Christmas. Say that again, though. Say that again. <laughs> what? I don't know what, what you want. <laughs> Go back and watch the archives. <laughs> huh? I don't know what I said. Okay. Uh, I, I just know I said it at the, at the 12 minute mark. <laughs> that's why I record these. Okay. How you doing, buddy, Chris? Hey, hey, good to see everybody. Hey, hey to you, Greg. Uh, yeah, man, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. What you're saying, like, um, I've definitely felt at times, uh, moments or periods of just like needing to be alone and needing to just go through it alone, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but it's good to see you, man. And like, I know I've kind of said this to you before, but I'll say it again. Cause I'm, I'm seeing it and hearing it. Um, you just seem lighter these days. Like you seem lighter and you seem open mm -hmm. and it's exciting to hear you talk about things like, oh man, how am I going to um you know fit back into the nine to five and get out there and maybe i want to leave my hometown and like that's exciting man to me that just says like major growth major um confidence i know you're, you said you want to build up your confidence but even to be able to talk about that kind of stuff and talk about your future in a positive way like that takes confidence and i i just I just want to point out all those things because sometimes it's hard to see the progress we've made ourselves, but, oh man, Thank I think you. we're all seeing it. Yeah. Awesome yeah. work, man. <laughs> That's support right you? there. Huh? Mm. What'd you ask for? What, what about you, Chris? How are you doing? What's up with you? Yeah. yeah thanks. Um, yeah, but thanks for the well. compliment. I needed that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I mean it. I mean it. You you look good. You sound good, and um, that's really exciting. And and I'm excited to hear from you as well, Jenny. Um, but yeah, I'm doing well. Um, you know, last week was so helpful, Kenneth. Uh, it was just me and Kenneth. We got on and, oh. and shared and talked, and and man, like I was having kind of a tough week before. I think we all probably 
struggling with certain things over the holidays and um mm-hmm. it just really helped kind of talk to you and and kind of I think it helped turn my week around um and you know I was talking to my wife last night and she she shared something with me that I thought wow that's that's great she was saying um she's like hey you know you've been you've been so positive lately you're talking about all these exciting things and change and growth and all this and she said but I don't think that your day-to-day life has necessarily gotten you know any objectively uh, 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 better you know she was like it's your it's your response to it she was really like recognizing just the fact that I I really am living a little bit more in the present and trying to um take life just at face value as it comes up um including withdrawal symptoms right it's like there's some days where I'm just walloped with symptoms and yeah um, it's like that day's just kind of screwed you know but then the next day is a new chance to uh just have a new day and sometimes it's wild it's like uh i'll have one day where i'm just you know it's just kind of a a, a screwed day with tons of withdrawal symptoms the next day a total window and i'm feeling great and grateful to be alive and and all those yeah. things so so i'm just trying to take it as it comes it feels like it can change on a dime so that goes both ways right if you're feeling crummy then it's like man i may start feeling better at any moment and i'm i don't want to miss that moment so i'm gonna stay in the moment and um yeah so it, it, overall i'm i'm doing well man. i'm doing well is it a roller a little bit but i will say these days i'm i feel like i'm having more good days than the bad days not to label them but you know a bad day is a day where it's like hard to get out of bed or you're just mm-hmm. racked with um negative thoughts and and uh mm-hmm. and just just you know viewing life through this lens of everything is is horrible and 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 death is all around me these these big mm-hmm. existential woes mm-hmm. um that can just wallop you um mm-hmm. And when those days happen, I try not to fight them. I think I think that's what's made it more of a fluid dance. It's like there's days I'm angry and I'll just be angry, you know, and I'll think about what am I angry about? And why am I angry about it? And instead of I used to think I shouldn't be angry. Oh, God, if only I wasn't angry and I'd beat myself up for it and I'd shame myself and all these things that didn't help the anger i think it forced the anger to stay around longer and probably do more damage and so now it's like whatever i'm feeling i just try to feel it so that i can mm-hmm. move forward you know mm-hmm. not get stuck mm-hmm. so i'm trying anyhow yeah. you know i was joining with a mighty companion last night which uh, that's the whole purpose of this ministry you know to stay connected join reach out and, and she re- it was perfect it, it could not have come at a better time she I'm here at the spiritual community, and she was a part of the spiritual community. And some people come for a short period of time. Some very few stay for, you know, very long. But she said to me, they, they, they all have the, the, the emotions that we all have. She said, they're, they're not enlightened. They all have the same emotions, except they're not judging them. It, it was a huge game. It's like... Oh my God, it really is that simple. They, they, they can be angry. They can be resentful. They, they're, they're, they're just, the training is that they're not judging that, which is just what Chris said. This is, mm-hmm. this is, this is why, I mean, they said in the 12 steps, it's, it's really very simple. They didn't say it was easy. It said it was very simple. If I can just allow myself to, to, to be this human mess and not judge the mess, mm-hmm. you know, once, once we start judging it, then, mm-hmm. <laughs> then, we, then I'm a candidate for pills. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Jenny, how are you? Jenny, you're in your RV. So I, I've been following you on Facebook. It looks like you're traveling. And I think you are on your way to Mexico. Are you on Rosarita Beach? Where are you at? I'm near Rosarita. Yeah, no, I thought you yeah. were on your way down there. I'm in my happy place. So in your RV. Yeah. If you're in Rosarita. I can't think of a better place to be than an RV in Rosarita. Yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> That's awesome. Have you, have you gone on I RV were... trips before, Jenny? This is our third winter here. Mm, great. So we escaped the Michigan snow and cold. 
come down here for a few months. Mm -hmm. You drove all back. the way from Michigan? Yeah. Wow. Uh, That's a long drive. Well, three, you're in an three RV. Days. Yeah. Well, actually, we leave our RV here, and we just drive our car back and forth. Mm -hmm. It was great. so good to hear from you, Greg and Chris. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I used to study Bach remedies, and oh, um, so I'm familiar with some of that. Mm -hmm. And I remember putting drops of flower essences, es essences in my water. And, oh, okay. you know, wa water is really powerful anyway, mm -hmm. because you can put your good intentions into your water mm -hmm. and drink it <laughs> um, it makes you feel good it really does and mm -hmm. um i love what chris said about staying in the moment and feeling your feeling that's mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. now that i'm in my happy place it's like a lot easier to cut back on the medication and folk, uh, work through the withdrawals um mm -hmm. I felt like today it's going to be a good day when I, when I woke up this morning and it's just mm -hmm. so far, it's been really good. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm in a really good time in my life and I'm grateful for support from people yeah. like you. And, um, I don't have much else to say. Thank you. Your smile's <laughs> helpful. Hey, so are you, yeah, are you yeah, actually yeah, on is your RV close to the water? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very close. It's walking. Oh, I, it's I love. Walk. I love. Oh man, I had a boat and I had a boat in Ensenada. Um, but so I mean, I'm from San Diego, so I used to go. You know, I get to San Diego to Ensenada an hour. Rosary to Beach was even quicker than that. I, oh, those were those are good memories, Jenny. That, 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 the right tide there. is the tide is really high right now because mm -hmm. of the atmospheric river from California. Mm -hmm. um, really? The tide is so high that in the morning you can't walk on the beach there's no beach to walk on but you can go in the afternoon wow when there's low tide you know it's interesting i spent all that time in ahi Hik with the, the you know the lake chapala area you know the last couple of years but still i it, it's it's completely different ahi Hik and, and rosarito that's that's baja california very very different you know flavor very different energy no i, I miss all that but um, kind of wish you i wish you could take can you can you take the iphone outside can we see can we see it can you show us probably it's probably nice weather out there mm -hmm. yeah let me switch over i'm on my ipad let me switch over sorry That'd guys cool. i just i just i just want to get i just want to get a reminder of, of the, the the times i missed i missed well i mean i'm not i'm not i would have to walk a distance to get to the beach that's all right and, and i'm just you know i'm just kind of for nostalgia i want to see good memories sort of good <laughs> shouldn't do that we'll do, we'll get, anyway i'm not going to talk about that Chris, I, I I hear you, Chris. You know, I, I still fall into oh somebody else came on. I don't know what Jenny? That was Jenny's Jenny. phone. Oh, okay. There's two Jennies. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Jenny, can you turn oh, off your yeah. old device? Because we're getting next. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get might that. Have to, you might have to mute your uh, laptop or your iPad. <laughs> Where you got on your phone? What was that? Are you there, Jenny? Oh, she left, or oh, she had to take both to my offline. Well, in the meantime, I just wanted to mention to Chris. You know, I, I, I still have a lot. I, I still can fall into to those places. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's part of why I'm just I'm, I'm I'm ramping up this you know reaching out I'm, I'm ramping up all the spiritual work you know mm -hmm. if it wasn't for those dark places Chris I don't think we'd be we'd be doing the spiritual work as his mm -hmm. you know like our that Zen master says you know you got to pursue God like your hair's on fire and yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, not I'm not point. trying to be all Pollyanna about it I'm just saying you know it's because of those dark places that I'm fuck fuck I'm in, I'm in, I'm in Ohio. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm in Ohio doing remodeling for the, the community. I, I I wouldn't have done this if, if it hadn't been for those dark places. I, I don't know if that's reframing or looking at it from the spirit's perspective or just the, the goddamn truth. So I'm, 
Yeah. Truly, I think this is the best thing that could have happened to us. You know, it's push, mm-hmm. it's pushing us into to doing the work. Although, if, if we're not pushed, humans don't do this work. They just don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they don't. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, yeah nobody wants to really. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah, there's generic. Show us. I want to see Rodrigo. There we go. Hold on, let me. There That's it is. My camper. Oh, nice. Part of the reason I wanted to see it is, is actually Rosarito is actually a desert. It's very arid down there. Yeah. Oh, it brings back memory. That looks great. You like it down there, Jenny? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. My friend's trying to push me into getting an RV instead of moving to a room. You're kind of, you're kind of making me want to do it, Jenny. <laughs> uh, the cost of living is affordable here yeah like our lot rent is only four hundred dollars a month how much four hundred how, how much is it just for the the lot without the utilities usually oh i don't know okay. it, it comes with the utilities no yeah. You know, um, Greg, I wanted to talk about something you shared uh, mm-hmm. about how how tough it must be to like re-enter society. You know, civilization after if, if, if I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that with like psych med withdrawal. Mm-hmm. It seems like a lot of people are forced to leave their jobs in some way, and then we go into this you know healing journey. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then at some point, you know, you're going to start feeling better and you have to like re-enter. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'll just share, I, I had a slightly different experience where I, I never left my job and I, throughout this process, I've thought at different points about quitting my job because I was just mm-hmm. struggling so much. Um, mm-hmm. I think it also kind of maybe forced me to, to do a, I don't know, maybe a slower taper to try to, to not have my withdrawals go so intense that I, you know, that I would felt like I would have to quit my job. So um, all I'm saying is I empathize because I, I certainly considered leaving my job and then thinking about, oh my gosh, you know, at some point I'd have to like re-enter and um, it's just got to be tough. You know, I, I, I think there's, there's something um, I've felt throughout this process of like, um, the like the safety of support groups like this or um going to a th- to therapy and being able to really share your feelings you're feeling so much with in withdrawal you're crying you're you, whatever you're processing and then all of a sudden you have to like switch over and go to your job you go to work and talk about <laughs> just ver- it's like it's, it's insane right you're like um there was there's been so many days where I, it's so hard for me to like separate those two things and um so yeah i just i feel free man i think it's like it's um the it's kind of oil and water sometimes you have uh, some jobs and the in and the the you know just the nature of being at work um and what that requires is often such a different like emotional mindset than withdrawal which is all about feeling and 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 it's like it's all coming out of you and workplaces generally a little bit more restrictive and a little bit more um you know we're not going to share about our emotions with our yeah. co-workers um i don't nor nor should we I, maybe i don't know but yeah we should not drop <laughs> never, i mean that's why we have groups like this it's yeah. uh, that's why it's so helpful but um anyway i just wanted to say that i i don't have any answers or anything but i i feel for you because i think it's a very relatable problem well, I'm going to do it from home. I just got to get that discipline because I'm used to the, like, the metaphysical ponderings and the religion, yeah. and the, all of that kind of stuff and the the inner work and everything. I mean, the, the star of Bethlehem, that, that Bach remedy kind of, you know, it, it, it made me about all the trauma, you know, and it's kind of, you know, made me forget about, you know, it made me feel less victimized and all that, but... So that helped to leave some of that behind, but still I'm used to the, 
I'm used to the introspection and you know everything. For for me, yeah. for, it took it took me a year before I could do meetings. You know, do these like twelve step meetings and stuff. And it wasn't it wasn't necessarily the twelve steps. It was it was just getting around people is what helped and doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, and interacting with people. And but now it's just like it's an extra step up. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's what blew me away about Kenneth's uh, early videos. You know, I remember, I remember being in uh, North Carolina and seeing mm -hmm. one of your first videos. I was visiting some family and had just started my taper and was really, really struggling and felt confused and alone and all those things. And then to see a, a little video on YouTube of someone talking about these exact feelings and experience was like really powerful. But like you, Greg the thought of actually talking with someone about it or joining a group was like no no way no way at that point i i wanted to just watch you, those videos on youtube kenneth mm -hmm. privately and and not have to actually i don't know it was almost like i didn't want to actually have to admit it admit that i was feeling these things and you know yeah but, but you too, how ironic that we've all gotten so much out of support work yeah, yeah. You know, when I joined with my mighty companion yeah. last night, you know, she's about, I'm 55, I think she's about a year older. And we're both 12 steppers. I met her in mm -hmm. this community almost six or seven years ago. I can't remember now. And, you know, again, I use the word grace. We were supposed to meet. And, you know, she's been a, because she was a 12 stepper, I said, oh, she's got the drill. You know, I'll call her when I have the, the need to really reach out and, and connect with someone. And finally, you know, Last night, we, we didn't talk about problems last night. We talked, it must have been on the phone for about, well, the face took about 45 minutes. We were actually roaring with laughter. And I said, Tamara, in real, oh, I hope I shouldn't have said her name. Well, anyway, um, I said, you know, if we could have fixed it by now, we would have. I said, you and I have been on a healing journey for decades. I said, we've done every single modality known to mankind, uh -huh. and it's not gone away. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, now we've earned the right to start laughing at it, that it's not supposed to go away. We're supposed to just see it and laugh at it if we can. Mm -hmm. it, you see, in the, in the beginning, you know, this is this is the whole misunderstanding of psychiatry is and the whole Western thought is is the healing is viewed as as it's a problem that's got to be fixed. That's mm -hmm. the Western mindset. That's allopathy. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that got us in, no fault, no blame. And that's great. I mean, listen, if you've got a broken bone, allopathy is essential. Fix the broken right. bone. But, mm. but allopathy has no business up here um, or, mm. or here. Um, well, not carte blanche, but, but generally for most of us, because it's not designed to be fixed. It's, it's designed to be allowed. That's the word, allowed. Mm -hmm. In, mm -hmm. I keep saying, in the front door, out the back door, breathe, in breath, out breath. You know, mm -hmm. without that, we constrict it and try and wrestle with it. And the more we wrestle with, wrestling with the ego is generated my mental illness. Right, right. Resistance, you know, that which resists, we resist persists. I had no, I didn't even have the brain wiring for this because I came from the, my, my father was a born again capitalist and Mm -hmm. he, he said the way to get through life is to tough it out and to resist it. He, I was taught that. I was, mm -hmm. It was a setup for mental illness, and it wasn't a problem. It, it, was, it was just it was the, the father I chose and the, the assignment that I chose. But really, by the, all three of them, Chris, you're a little bit younger than, than, than Greg and I, but, but now you're, so you're going to get it before Greg and I. Um, but Greg and I, Greg's a little bit younger than me. We, we, we've all three realized, man, we can't, we can't fix this right, because right. it's not broken or because we're not broken. Right, you know, right, right. Who, whose rule book said that we're supposed to go to work and earn income? Whose rule book said we're supposed to do nine to five? You know, yeah. that's, that's the reason the Course in Miracles has been so helpful in my journey because it's, it's, it's not given me. And that's why I'm not keen on religions that give rules. Right. Course in Miracles doesn't give rules. It takes rules apart. It, dis, it unwinds rules. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's completely opposite, but it's not Western. It's Eastern, if anything else. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's the way the ancient mystics approached, you know, uh, approached it.
Mm-hmm. Um, and there, I got on a little bit of a tirade. Um, but well, basically, yeah, I, what, I mean, just... <laughs> you know, as I'm entering society, I'm, I'm like looking at some of this help, and I'm like, the therapist every month. I'm wondering how useful it actually is. I'm like, she's sitting there with a pen and a pad, looking at me, not saying anything, and I'm just like. God, you know, do I even want to do this? I mean, it's good <laughs> to talk to somebody without who, who who's required not to give you an opinion, but it's just like, God, you know, I know what you're thinking. I know what CBT is. I know this bullshit. You know, I've done it. It's so, uh, I guess it's got a grain of usefulness, but it's 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 as, just as annoying as it is useful. <laughs> I, I, I find the usefulness in the discipline itself. It, the, the discipline is going to lead us to the ultimate discipline. This is the, the ultimate discipline is, 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 is knowing there's two voices and, and, and we've, we've got a choice. Mm-hmm. So maybe CBT has a place. I see it as a stepping stone, but I, 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 I've not, it was not a destination in my story. It was, it was a stepping stone, just like college was a stepping stone. I had to learn to discipline myself long enough but college was 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 just that I, certainly it, it you know getting a college degree wasn't supposed to, to really matter it was supposed to say right. look you have it in you to 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 work hard towards a goal to achieve that you have mm-hmm. you have that capacity now let's put it to some real use who, who cares about a bachelor's yeah. degree? nobody does i don't and if, and if a person thinks they do, I don't, I don't, I'm not really interested in spending time with them because that's not the purpose of life. Purpose of life is to use that discipline to know we have two voices and we have a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, the ego's voice or the spirit's voice. And it's, you know, the spirit's voice is going to give us all. When I connect with the spirit's voice, I don't need a, psychi- a psychologist to tell me which way to go. I don't need a life coach. I don't need a religion because it's coming from the inside out. I'm the, you know, the sort of my intuition has all the answers, but reconnection is reconnecting with that voice. That's and trusting it because we were told, a lot of the religions told us, don't trust that inner voice. Do what we say instead. And so you get, again, I'm, I'm very cautious with religions. I've, I, I, I realize, you know, it's, it's, so that's that's something I don't really want to go because because judging is going to put me right back you know into all that morass that I you know pontificate of emerging from. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Guys. Yeah, but yeah, you no, know, I, I love that. I love you touched on. I, I wrote it down. It's not meant to be fixed. It's meant to be allowed. And I think yeah. I, I've had similar thoughts about talk therapy and CBT and and that kind of thing, Greg. Lately, I've been like, oh, do I? I want to keep meeting with my therapist, you know, um, I've gotten so much out of these other areas of improvement or whatever you want to call it, but actually improvement. That's what I want to touch on. I think I remember hearing a piece of advice a while back about like, whenever we, um, compare ourselves to others or we get, or we become jealous or envious of someone else's life. And the, mm-hmm. the piece of advice was, Hey, be very careful with being jealous of someone else's life, because if you want their life, you, you would have it all. You would have all of what makes them, them, the good and the bad. And I think about that sometimes with like self-improvement or, um, even like my own story of like, oh, I was diagnosed with OCD, which basically meant there was someone else being like, hmm, this other person, this kid is uh, obsessive. They're they're too obsessive. They're too much of this and not enough of that. Yeah. And whenever we try to improve a, 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 a flaw, we then also may be disregarding the the benefits of whatever that aspect of ourselves is. Um, not that we can't try to change our behavior or thought patterns or anything, but um, I think maybe what first has to happen is that acceptance so that we're not changing things out of shame and guilt and anger and self-flogging and all those things. I mean, I love when Beloved talks about this because yeah. she'll be like, yeah, I'm bipolar and I have ups and downs and I ride that out and I work with that and I love that about me. And it's like this radical acceptance. And um, I, I just love that because, yeah, I think when we label it as a problem, something that needs to be fixed, improved 
improved, changed. Mm -hmm. It's also just, it's totally disregarding what that thing might be doing for our benefit. Mm -hmm. Um, And to bring up another thing that beloved said to me that I just love and I bring up all the time now is like this whole, you don't know anything. Like, where do you think you, where do you get it in your head that you know what needs to be fixed and what doesn't need to be fixed and this is good and that's bad and it's like who the hell do you think you are you know <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you just first start with yeah. accepting yourself mm-hmm. and trying to kind of flow with it you know go with the flow mm-hmm. rather than um mm-hmm. man you know kind of like you were talking about like resisting life I, I was also brought up with this kind of perfectionism mindset which is similar mm-hmm. right it's like mm-hmm. I need to fix this. This needs to be better. I need to keep things within my control so that I can <laughs> do it right so that nothing will hurt me. You know, it's like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, what is that? Let it go and try to try to flow a little bit more. Mm. Yeah. And, and just for the Thank you, Chris. I want to point well out. spoken. I like well, that. You guys, yeah. you guys are on a, a rock and roll. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to interject for very long, but I just want to point out, Craig, you're laughing. Greg, you're smiling from ear to ear. That's listen. That's that's all it takes. Period. Is to <laughs> laugh and smile from ear to ear. And I know as soon as we get off the Zoom call, I'm going to probably go back and try and fix your problems. But for this moment, just <laughs> notice how it feels to just laugh your ass off yeah. at at our humanity. We can't I'm, fix I'm it. We can't change again. it. I'm actually happy. That's I'm, it. I'm getting period. To happy. Very, yeah. very simple. Greg is happy in this moment. You're emerged. See, mm-hmm. you, 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 you know, you got my stamp of approval, but I know I got, you know, I got to jump in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to, this, my, my teacher is not a big fan of self-help mm-hmm. because, you know, oh. he saw the same thing I saw when I had my near-death experience that there is no self. Yeah. We're trying to fix <laughs> something that doesn't exist. Now, that that belly laugh that we just heard from Greg, my teacher has that belly laugh 24 seven. <laughs> it's called abide, he abides in it. <laughs> That's why we're our, our teacher. When I saw there was no self to, that I was trying to fix, it became a cosmic joke. And, and, and that laughter that Greg has, that laughter opened up a channel mm. to the, the, the intuitive voice that started, that, that started giving all the guidance from there forward. That is emergence, period. <laughs> mm-hmm. Basically, Greg, the way you believe in the your Bach flower remedies, it's because you believe in them. Yeah. It's the power, Jody's always bringing up, you know, the, the biology of belief by Bruce Lipton. Mm-hmm. When, and I've said a time before, you know, people say, how'd you get off those, those what, 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 what shifted? And I said, I simply stopped believing in them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. we... <laughs> Basically, you know, I, I know we're, we're all still, you know, in the time space, you know, continuum, you know, of, of past, present and future. But mm-hmm. truly, the miracles upon which, you know, Beloved and I, you know, have come to, to share and everyone's got one is to to basically just for all of us to take up your mat and walk. All we got to do is, is realize for one second who we are. And who cares if the dream character has, you know, mental illness? Who cares if the dream character is going through withdrawal? Who ca- I don't care anymore. And, and suddenly, you know, it's, yeah. it's as if like when Eckhart Tolle woke up, he, he woke up out of the, you know, one day and he said, he said, I can't do this anymore. What does he say? He said, I don't remember exact, exact words. You know, he's, Eckhart Tolle said, made the statement, I can't live with myself any longer. Mm-hmm. But at that moment, he realized who's the one who can't live with myself any longer. See, yeah. this it's it's it can't it can't be biological anymore. It has to it has to be now metaphysical and spiritual. That you know, I was talking to my friend Dale, who's in prison. I'm going to go see him tomorrow. I talk with him on the phone. I talk with him every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And he says, he says, who he's he's in prison. He's been in prison for 18 years. Oh yeah. And he yeah, says, yeah. who's the one that's been locked up? He's, he's happy. He said, I don't care. He said that he gets out in July of 2020. Really? He doesn't care anymore. He uh-huh. said, he said, they, they can't lock up who I am. Uh-huh. They can't put who I am and who I am is everything. They can't be locked up. Uh-huh. That's, you know, that, that's why I support, started this group because Good I saw Lord, so that many. Is, that like, is phenomenal. That is well, great. But go ahead. So, so many of these, these psych, people just chasing symptom after symptom. I said, 
I said, oh, there's, 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 there, there's, I said, that is, I mean, that's fine if you want to go there, but, yeah, but, yeah. but that's going to take you forever. Let's, let's speed this up and, and, and get the show on the road. And that's, you know, I was, I was delivered the near death experience exactly. So when I could help people get the show on the road, help Who's myself that? get there, the show on the road. There's a woman, I forget if she stopped at the madness or mad in America, but she said she had such a self-discipline of, you know, addressing things like pressured speech and bipolar and all that stuff. I think that's where she snapped and she just got off her meds because she, she, she didn't want to do that shit anymore. Because she, can't she, had do this anymore. Discipline. she had that discipline to fix, 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 fix. And I, I think it stopped the madness, but... She, you, you you could see that she just she she got pissed and i think she's still pissed because she had that discipline and then she just kind of went against all that you know we all snapped uh -huh. and, and you know helen shuckman who who channeled the course in miracles you know she snapped she she never took pills she was a psychologist at columbia university and she snapped and she says there's got to be a better way right right, right. that's that's how the course in miracles came into form that's the prayer. There's got to be a better way and help. Mm -hmm. That was my thing. I, I I felt like I was holding my breath for so many years, just yeah. like holding my breath in. And I was so afraid. Um, I kind of knew that if I let my breath out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, metaphorically, I, I would... Um, I would risk losing my mind. That was always my fear was I'd lose my mind. Mm -hmm. And then it got too hard to hold my breath in. And then I became aware of letting my breath out. And like, I knew I was like, I'm going to lose my mind. And then I kind of did. And I remember I was kind of, um, you know, I, I never went into a psych ward or anything. So I guess maybe it's a, maybe it's a spectrum of, you know, losing your mind, but like, I really call it ego death, whatever it was. I just, mm -hmm. I was losing myself and and i was kind of aware of it as it was happening and it was very scary but it was also very freeing it was like i can't hold on to this any any longer mm. and it was like man i've tried this other way <laughs> it's like okay i'm really scared to peek behind the curtain but okay i'm going to i'm going to peek behind the curtain yeah yeah there's a um there's a good beatles song about ego death I forgot what it is. I'm not a Beatles fan. It's kind of weird to me, Beatles. Uh, but somebody that says, you're not dying. There's a sitar in it. It says, you're not dying. You're not dying. Kind of reminds me of what you just mm. said. Yeah. 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 Because mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, well, you know, if the ego is the one whispering, <laughs> whispering into our ear, and it's also the thing that might die if we do certain things, then that whisper is going to say a lot of weird things. Like, you know. Uh, don't do that and stay safe and stay small and um, maybe you should keep you know for me it was like I'm gonna keep taking these pills so that I stay sane and so that I can fix my very sick brain I'm very sick you know <laughs> <laughs> and and I was very afraid of um, one of the hurdles of me coming off my pills or making the decision to come off my pills was um this feeling of rebellion. It felt like I'm supposed mm -hmm. to take these. I'm supposed to take these. And, and if I don't take them, like everyone around me will know and they'll be upset with me. And there's all these beliefs and yeah. very, um, you know, self-policing that it just didn't even exist. You know, there was no one that wanted me to take my pills. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone around me turns out after I had loving open conversations with them they wanted me to be happy and healthy and safe and yeah. uh, if, if that involved pills or if it didn't they didn't really have a preference right uh, it was but all these it was just all these yeah. yeah all these beliefs that i had and i picked up and, and some people did tell me along the way that i held on to for many years but yeah it's just like it's so interesting that i feel like withdrawal is also like you said kenneth it's not meant to be fixed it's meant to be allowed and i feel like withdrawal is a process of like allowing surrendering and uh and mm. breathing the you know, thing this... that scared me though was like i had all those reasons for anger and you know there's no gaba and no gl all glutamate no no breaks all gas i found out all that stuff you know i went to detox and i 
it it scared me because I, you know, I almost I discussed with this with Kenneth. I almost did not hold on to those feelings. I almost acted on them, and that that was the scary part. That's why that you know I was watching YouTube videos on prison, sitting in, around the local prison, you know, thinking this and, is and that's that's exactly that. good. Greg, I, I'm glad you brought that up. That thoughts was thoughts scared of me. violence. Am I hearing you correctly? Thoughts of violence. Oh, it was no good, no, good, 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 perfect. We, we got it. We got it. Thoughts of violence. I want this yeah. documented. All right. Um, I was having thoughts of violence several yeah. days ago. I'm in a spiritual community, and there was there, there was there was some pretty hardcore. Um, there was crazy wisdom here. Yeah. Um, not not good, bad, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Thoughts of violence came up. Mm -hmm. um, you know they they've they've. I don't really know where I want to go with this. Um, you, uh, I, I'll I'll just share what mine were. Mm -hmm. I, I sat with it for twenty four hours, praying. You know, calling, and it's a spiritual community, so we've got channels. To, to, to address the thoughts of violence. And I started going through the channels, but, but in, in, at the end, of course, I had to go to sleep and just pray my ass off and I got it. Mm -hmm. Greg, mine, I got it after 24, it's a very quick turnaround, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Mine were coming from some core shame, mm -hmm. core shame. Mm -hmm. and, and I was pushing it down and holding it down like a beach ball. And, and, and I, I, one of the messengers had, had to pop that bubble. Uh -huh. And I, 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 re I responded and reacted. Well, I didn't respond. I didn't react. But the thoughts of violence were right there at the surface. Uh -huh. Now, choice point, because here I am 55. Those, that, 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 that happened in my early 20s. And they said, you know, the, the system said, get them on pills. It's too dangerous to have them out there without pills. Uh -huh. Now, at age 55, they came back. This time, because I'm psychiatrically sober and I have the support network in place mm -hmm. and I have the faith established when it came back this time, mm -hmm. I could identify it. You Mine were. was shame. Okay. Now that it's in the light, see, now see, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. I've got to screw in my hands. I'm destruction. Now that it's up and out, now that it's at the surface. Chris, I, I want to get to what you said earlier. Now I can mm -hmm. hand it over. All this time, you know, hand it over to the Holy Spirit. How do you do that? Well, this is how you do it. You, you, you get the button pushed. You grab the resources. You grab the tools. It's all out fresh, seeing the light of day. Now I'm handing it over because I don't know what to do with this shame. I don't. I have no clue. I don't know anything. I don't know what to do with it. I've tried everything. Mm -hmm. Hand it over. Now the teachings, you know, now the belief, now the faith. And I'll swear, I'll, I'll, I'll stand for the record. It's working. Um, but I want to touch on something Chris said. Chris, basically, here's what we're doing. We're coming out of the closet. This is what we did. You know, this is what gay man did. It was this, this gay man did in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. We're coming out. This is who we are. This is a beautiful thing. This is a, 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 a rite of passage. This is entrance into adulthood. This is... Mm -hmm. And you can't enter adulthood, and you can't enter adulthood unless you've lived with the mask. First, we put the mask on, and this is why I just love posting these meetings just to, 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 to be present while someone has the you know. You, and Chris, you're so eloquent to be able to put it into to, to words. The taking off of the mask itself. Mm -hmm. None of us were ever mentally ill. Mine was shame. Yeah. That's what mine was, and I can't. He can, and I think I'll let him. This is the part where this is the part where it has to. There has. To, Greg, I'm glad you're doing the, the Bach flower remedies. I'm glad you're believing in the block, the, the Bach flower remedies, because this is where we. I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We do have to believe. Mm -hmm. We do have to believe. Mm -hmm. And in order for to hand it over into something I can't taste, touch, hear, smell, see, mm -hmm. and I hand it over to a higher power. Mm -hmm. The end. That's where the faith comes in. It's the very last straw. I guess I I, I want to I, I do want to say that they actually work because this the weird thing when I found out I was doing one support group and I quit it for six weeks and went to a different one and I went. Well, wait, back. can I can I stop you for a second, Greg? Did, did you hear what I said that 
that that at the core because you kind of went sideways there for a minute uh -huh. did, did you hear that it, mine was coming from shame oh, we'll say shame. that again. what what do you want me to my write? violent thoughts mm -hmm. had an origin in shame yeah okay and at least you're able to recognize them now they're not suppressed uh -uh. right yeah, I think all of our feelings are reactions to right. something that either happened to us or something we're processing. You know, like I had a, a lot of um, suicidal mm -hmm. thoughts, uh, more so than like homicidal thoughts. But I think they're very similar because one, both homicidal thoughts and suicidal thoughts are very like they're very scary, both internally when they're happening to you, but then on a societal level, too. We're like very uh, discouraged to share both of those feelings. That's not that's not water cooler talk to say I'm having homicidal or suicidal thoughts. Yeah, no, yeah, but yeah, I think also because they're such powerful mm -hmm. thoughts and they they speak to I mean my God, mm -hmm. pretty high stake uh, situations or mm -hmm. feelings. Um, I think what's interesting is all of the thoughts and feelings that come from having either mm -hmm. suicidal or homicidal thoughts, you know, like Kenneth, um, you know, we were talking a little bit last week about that. And, and I remember you gave a big preface. You said, okay, I'm going to share this thing that I've experienced. Mm -hmm. I've had homicidal thoughts. And I, I remember I remarked, I was like, oh, that's so interesting that you prefaced it like that, mm -hmm. because I think that speaks to the shame behind it, because mm -hmm. I don't think, um, A, it's that abnormal. I think yeah. um, it's pretty well documented, for one, that if you're coming mm -hmm. off psych drugs or you have a history of all this stuff, yeah, that's part of it. That's that's a symptom. You can have suicidal thoughts or homicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. but um, but beneath it, yeah, it's like watch the reaction you may have to being someone to, to, to reacting to like, Oh my gosh, I'm now a person that has these thoughts. We mm -hmm. layer on the shame. We layer on the, the fear, you know, like homicidal thoughts. It's like, mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm so afraid that I even had this thought, you know, who am I? I'm, I'm so sick. You know, it's like, that's the real problem is the reaction to the thing mm -hmm. that, um, that if we look a little deeper, like with suicidal thoughts, it's like, I'm a firm believer that if you're experiencing suicidal thoughts, it's because you are experiencing so much emotional mm -hmm. or maybe physical pain and your body and your system, you don't know what to do and mm -hmm. how to react to this. And our brains are wonderful problem solving mm -hmm. machines. And I think a suicidal thought is, is simply a reaction to an incredible mm -hmm. amount of pain. Yeah, I, I don't want a good that, way to put yeah, it. Yeah. Greg, Greg, we can, we can, I just got to stop the YouTube recording itself. Um, but, yeah. but you will leave the Zoom room open. Chris, perfect. Chris, yeah. I mean, I, I want this documented because what you said has to be, you know, you even get closed mm -hmm. captions, you know, so I can go through the transcripts. All right, this is just it for the YouTube archive. This is Kenneth Price. This is Sunday, January 8th. I'm, this is this 59th Sunday morning Zoom call. Absolute miracle that this has been documented. Uh, Craig, uh, Greg and Chris, and we had Jenny earlier, three courageous souls who have chosen to exit psychiatry and permeate the veils of mental illness and at the same time to surrender their psych meds. Um, God damn, I am so, so privileged and honored mm -hmm. to be able to start a ministry of, of this. Um, God, it just I know I'm, I'm talking too much, but um, I'm going to end the recording itself. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave your comments below. Please, 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 if you're watching this on YouTube, join us. I, the only way I can keep this ministry active is for people to continue to participate and show up. Um, all right. So anyway, we're going to keep the Zoom room open afterwards. So may the force be with you. And God bless. I'm, Greg, I'm just going to end the recording now.